<laughs> that's it, I guess, right now. <laughs> I'll go next. Uh, my name's Hannah. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, I primarily have been working with painting um, two-dimensionally, uh, but in the collaboration with Brie, we were really engaging with space and thinking about how um, two-dimensional forms can relate with three-dimensional forms, um, which is also something that I like to work a lot with, um, figuring out how these two things can exist in a space together um, expansively, so it's not just one or the other. Um, but yeah, specifically lately, as you can see in the background here in my studio, I've been working a lot with um, oil on canvas and panel, as well as uh, drawing practice, so oil on paper, as well as um, oil pastel colored pencil marker on um, vellum and tracing paper. And yeah, it was it was a great experience uh, working with Brie collaboratively. Um, in the show, um, I have paintings and Brie has her rug works and glass objects. And then we both were working on the vinyl cutouts that um, are kind of connecting the pieces together on the wall. I guess I'll go next. Um, my name is Brie and Hannah kind of said everything about our work, uh, but my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I, yeah, as Hannah said, I'm really interested in glass making um, as well as kind of more recently since the pandemic been working with rug tufting. And I think um, there's an interesting crossover between the two in glass being kind of historically male dominated and still a lot to this day. And then textiles being seen stereotypically as women's work. and. And so it's interesting as their materialities collide of glass being hard and shiny and smooth and rugs being rough and fluffy and uh, kind of just so different from one another. And I'm having a really fun time combining my kind of visual language through these two different materials, as well as, as Hannah said, through the vinyl work, um, kind of connecting things together. And as well in the gallery, I have some shelf, uh, floating shelves that kind of help bridge the plane between where the glass is and where the wall exists, but they also add like a thickness and depth and then kind of disappear into a single plane of color with the vinyl. And I'm interested in depth in a weird way. And I think part of that is my history making glass, but also this new rug endeavor where I kind of get to change things in the plane just with the material. So. I kind of am uh, maybe a lover of craft and craftsmanship and then kind of subject it to art more than the other way around. <laughs> That's interesting. We talked a little bit about the intersectionality of your work in terms of palette or materials, subject matter. Uh, can you um, each talk a little bit about your um, titles for your, um, uh, your work here in the gallery? Um, yeah, um, my title is um, A Way Out, which is the title of my ladder um, series of sculptures, which you can kind of see here. I have multiple ladders in the gallery, but also um, this title um, is not only like inspired by the title of an album that I listen to a lot when making work, which is titled The Way Out by the Books, but also um, I'm thinking about um, my work is in, like kind of informed by trauma and trauma recovery and trauma like narratives, but also thinking of like ladders as like a symbol of escape and like an escape route and um, thinking of like a way out of like a bad situation or traumatic experience or something like what if we just had like the ability to like have a, an escape route from like like when things went wrong you could just kind of like climb up a ladder and just go to a different worlds you know um and also the fact that some of my art um two of my pieces in here um are titled um quarantine um, daydreaming of escaping to a farm and then one of quarantine daydreaming to escaping from a farm and so both of those were kind of like also escape routes to different places um, yeah <laughs> Hannah do you want me to talk about sad lady sad or do you want to talk about it <laughs> Um, I'll, I guess maybe I'll talk about where it came from and then you can Brie you can talk a little bit about your writing for it 
Um, so Sad Lady Sad came from um, one of the paintings that I included, or we both decided to include in the show that um, is titled Sad Lady. Um, and then there's these uh, clay pieces that go along with it. So it repeats like Sad Lady Sad. And it comes from a Rene Magritte painting that's titled The Literal Meaning. And the painting is um, this kind of uh, really, um, I guess, simple space. It's a shelf. And then there's a frame on the shelf um, that says Femtrist on it, which translates to Sad Lady in English. Uh, so this painting kind of struck me as, um, I don't know, like repeating this thing throughout the history within painting of depicting women in these kind of distraught situations or um, just the, I guess, like in general, the depiction of women throughout time in painting. And so I decided to make a sad lady painting and like, or like that question of what would my sad painting, uh, my sad lady painting be? And then um, I think that stuck out to Brie and that's how we kind of arrived at the title. Um, but yeah, Brie, why don't you talk a little bit now about um, your interest in it? Yeah, I think um, when we kind of started grouping work for the show, um, Hannah's sad lady painting really stood out to me and then she uh, described what she just described now and kind of her relationship to it. And I felt like it was kind of perfect and serendipitous to talk about it in the way that I'm thinking about glass making um, in particular and, and how it's, yeah, there's still parts of the world where I would just be laughed at if I said that I was a glass blower because women don't blow glass. And so like, I think uh, as well through kind of the pandemic and, and art history and kind of um, reading like different writings of different artists uh, at the moment, I keep landing on all these diaries of women painters that um, it just depicts them as being depressed and sad, but there's not a single diary or depiction of a male painter being depressed or sad. And so as a part of the writing for the show, I had this reflection on Jackson Pollock and it's probably because it's the only abstract expressionist painter that my mother knows of. And so I was thinking a lot about him and his alcoholism and how nobody really describes him as being sad or depressed, but they talk about his vice instead. And I think it's really interesting how things are talked about differently just based on gender. And I think it ties a lot into the way that I'm making work and thinking about work. and. Um, especially with the glass pieces, I see them as being kind of bodies on their own and, and having their own object. Um, what's that word? Like they have autonomy. And so a lot of the times they're like specifically gendered or ungendered based on how the viewer perceives them. And so this idea of sad lady just kind of seemed perfect in combining Hannah's work and my work together um, to land on a title. And then I think uh, as far as like past just the show titles go, I think me and Hannah like to get a little comical in our titling of individual works. And I think that's something that I've started doing um, perhaps a little bit inspired by Hannah's uh, titling practice over the last couple of years of being in grad school alongside her and um, seeing other people's titles as well. I always used to title things like one word and now I'm really into these like long dramatic sentence titles that are kind of just ridiculous. And, but I think it's a nice way to sort of land in storytelling and in the work in a different and exciting way or to get like a different perspective on the work after looking at it. And so I guess I don't really see a title as being like the be all and end all of the work, but maybe just another moment of entry in. And I don't know, Hannah, if you wanted to add on to that, because you like dramatic, weird, quirky titles, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, the only thing that I would add is I think it's also interesting. And like, I think overall in the show, the color palettes are really vibrant, um, either through like pastels or saturation or contrast. And I think a lot of the time there's a, an association with color, with like that kind, that kind of color being joyful or exuberant. And I think Sad Lady Sad is also maybe a way to create another layer to that. Um, Cause I think that there's also moments where it maybe isn't so joyful or exuberant in the work. So it's kind of a double-edged sword in a way. 
yeah, and I guess another title to a long title that I'm excited about on this show is one of my larger paintings um, called um, "What Are What Are You What Are We Waiting For But Waiting." So it's uh, this kind of redundant sentence um, describing, I guess, the feeling I've been having lately with everything that's going on with quarantine and COVID and waiting for something that may not come and the repetition in that. Yeah, yeah you make a good point. Um, I know some of our discussions were about creating and finding time to create. Uh, I know you all are very busy with other things. How is it that you are able to prioritize time for creating and what um, what is, is it that inspires you to create? And maybe talk a little bit about your process for creating. Yeah, I can try to go first again. Um, I, I mean, I feel like right now I've um, been kind of like creating a lot and then like also taking time off but like kind of in cycles um I, like over the past year i've had like three kind of like solo shows so i feel like i've just been like making 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 new work constantly um but also this summer i was like work trading on an organic farm in the like, eco commune which is where i like got inspiration to make that painting the sunset painting um and also the tent and like things like that. Um, and so that was definitely like, I was taking a break to like do other things. And I was, I was painting that painting while I was there on a porch <laughs> of someone's tiny home. But also I was really kind of like taking a break to like just experience things and like be inspired by experiences. And I was working a lot. So it was like, it was definitely hard to be making. Um, but right now I have a studio that I've basically been in like every day, um, either like trying to get ready for the show or like trying to make things. Um, and so I feel like it kind of comes and goes for me, but I also feel like I definitely feel like I can't, like I feel like I'm just like, I feel too overwhelmed to do other things other than just paint. Like it's kind of like the number one thing I want to do is like make things. Um, and like share them with people or give them to people. Um, and so, um, I don't know, that's what I'm doing, <laughs> I guess. But also, um, I mean, I'm trying to find the importance in like doing other things like volunteer work and doing, um, like spending time outside in nature, spending time with friends, going on adventures and like traveling a little bit, going on road trips, trying to see new art in different spaces or going and supporting other artists and like, um, or just like doing anything and just seeing how that continuously influences my art. And that's like all part of the same practice. Like no matter what I'm doing, it's in influencing what I'm making. And I'm always making. So it's, I see like all my time as like art time, I guess. <laughs> um, does that answer the question? Okay, great. <laughs> I'll just keep the order going. Um, yeah, I think it is. it has been difficult um, trying to keep the flow going in the studio, I think. But I think as Sky is saying, just showing up um, and trying to find ways that um, I guess the practice can also happen outside of the studio as a way to keep it going. Um, I think that usually I respond to spaces um, to build out the work, like how much space do I have? How can I fill it? Um, and I was really lucky through the OSC program to have that um, at the Sherman Arts Center in the clean space. It's a really, really large space. And I really liked experimenting with height in the work, um, like how tall I can make something. And uh, that also kind of carried over into my thesis work um, last spring. And so once, you know, things got shut down, I kind of had a transition back into painting, uh, which I think I think similar um, to Sky as well, it's a really great way to escape um, and to find moments of just like being quiet with the process and responding to what's in front of you. Um, and I think it also just fueled this like pretty intense introspection for me in regards to where I grew up, um, like ideas surrounding identity, 
which kind of evolved evolved into this character of the cowgirl or cowboy um, in the paintings that appear in the paintings that, um, in the show um, that's up right now. And so in thinking about how to then expand into space again, um, the collaboration with Brie was a really cool opportunity because um, I feel like Roy also had the, um, the columns that we could play with and how we were um, organizing sight lines. And so it again, like opened up the paintings into a spatial dimension, which was really exciting for me. Um, and so the responding, the response that usually happens within the drawings for me um, started happening with the vinyl and how these vinyl cutouts were pretty intuitive, um, responding to the painting shapes in the paintings and then the shapes in the glass objects and rugs. Um, so it, I feel like it really translated well, like the way that I actually, um, how, the process that I use in my drawings and then the process that we were kind of working in the space together is very reactionary um, and in the moment. Now I'm like trying to remember what the question was. Um, I think it's like, how, how do I keep making? Yeah. Um, I think for me, uh, making comes from this deep desire to learn and to like learn new skills, but also to keep busy and keep my hands busy. And so when I'm not making art, I'm like fixing things in my house or like reupholstering our chairs or like all sorts of random things. And so I really love the act of moving around in space. And so glass blowing in particular is like a dance with a bunch of other people in the room, all kind of working collaboratively on a piece. And I think movement and having my body moving is really important in my like desire to keep making. And whether that be in the glass studio or in the wood shop, or if I'm fabricating something in the metal shop, I love like kind of working between and around different spaces. And I think, uh, yeah, I think maybe there's one point in my life where I decided like, maybe I don't want to be an artist and I don't want to go down this road. And then I stopped making for like a month and was absolutely miserable. And so I think that I, I more just have to make for myself to, um, you know, feel maybe a sense of like validation or purpose, but also like to, you know, sleep well at night. Like I remember my grandma always telling me that she had to keep busy in the day to sleep well at night. And I think that that's like so true for me that I, yeah, have to, always, I just love making stuff. I just always have to be making things and um, fixing things and figuring out how things work. Um, yeah, I love figuring out how things work. And I think, um, yeah, this collaboration with Hannah was like a nice kickstart to kind of the the school year for me as I'm still at OSU in grad school and and it's been like a big push to get it done but it's been really fruitful for me in kind of also challenging myself to um, you know get out of my routine like I think once I get into something it gets a little bit too dry at times and and so it's nice to like switch up kind of the language and especially with playing with the vinyl with Hannah and getting to pull some of her language out of the paintings and into the vinyl. It's really exciting for me to then like go back into my studio and do some sketches and and figure out some new possibilities. So yeah, I just love playing around in the studio. It's just like my favorite place to be. <laughs> That's Thanks great. How that. have you has your access to materials and space influenced the work that you create? Do we want to stick with the order or should I just mess with it right now? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I think like for me, space totally changes the work. Like I, um, before coming to OSU, I was in a residency where I had a shelf of that I could keep my stuff on and, and I made tiny things and I wasn't working in this expansive installation way and so I definitely think like access to spaces and, um, you know, opportunities like showing at Roy is like really important for me to, you know, change or challenge the practice. And I think that's similar for Hannah. She talked a lot about installing in different spaces, impacting the work. Um, but 
I do think that like access changes things. When everything shut down and I was kicked out of my studio, I was just making textiles in my bedroom and that's all I could do. Um, but I think that, yeah, if I have access to something, I'm gonna use it. And if I don't, I'm gonna use something else. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, similarly, I think I touched on this um, a little bit before. Um, I, yeah, I kind of switched from like welding metal structures into like tiny gouache paintings. Um, and so that was pretty dramatic for me and thinking about like containment. And I think that um, idea conceptually carries through a lot of the way that I'm organizing space in the paintings too. Um, they're really dense. Like I'm trying to fit everything possible into the painting, it feels like. So it's, um, I'm thinking kind of of it as, you know, taking these expansive spaces I was working with and just pushing them into this tiny little space. And so, um, yeah, I was starting with gouache. And then once I got um, a, the, the space that I'm in now that I share with two other artists, um, which is an old car garage, I was able to work on a larger scale and to start working with oil paint again, which was another like material transition um because i had to start thinking about craft in a different way and um yeah so i think that you know the, uh, the space that you're in really dictates the materials that you're working with and that you can work with um and the space as well as quarantine and covid um you know residencies uh you know are shutting down we're shutting down so there weren't as many opportunities to actually go someplace to make specific work as well um but i think that yeah it's i think i feel pretty lucky with how much um space i have now and um, the scale that i can work at um, within the paintings and then um having the opportunity to work at roy too was a different way to again think about the work and how it can expand and um that's kind of like a an interesting problem um, to come up with and how to navigate the space and like move from the containment of the painting into the like this kind of real space and how marks can somehow translate between these, um, I think formally two very different um, works. Yeah, um, I forget the question, but I hear we're talking about spaces. Um, I'm How sorry. does your access to space and materials influence your work? Okay, thank you for that. Uh -huh. I thought it was, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, right now I have a studio at 400, um, and that is when I was able to actually start working on this piece about like um, in December. Um, and before that, I was making like smaller works because I was working in my bedroom that was like very small. And it's basically just like a bed, a curtain, and just like studio <laughs> space is like kind of, and plants is like how my bedroom was kind of set up. Um, but when I was on the farm, I um, was making that piece of me, my ex-partner, um, because I had like a little space on someone's porch of their tiny house. And they were like, yeah, just come paint. Like, I love it. Just come paint and you can leave it here. And so, but it was outside. And so I kind of like just had my palette and like some brushes and that painting. And that's like all I really had in that space. And so I really just kind of spent like basically the whole summer working on that piece. Um, whenever I'd have like a day off or like have some free time away from like working or being in the woods or something, I would just be like focusing just on this one piece. Um, and like I kind of liked that experience. Like I wish I had had more space and time there but also I was like doing other things. And so it was cool to just like have that focus on that one thing. When quarantine happened, I was actually at a residency in Pittsburgh. Um, and so I was living in the studio and gallery space and then there was apartments upstairs. So I was like, I, part of my um, like quarantine was like being in the studio, which was really lucky, I guess. Um, but also I was like depressed and like wasn't creating a ton, but I again, kind of like to have this painting I was working on and I was very large and multifigurative like this painting similar. And I um, just kind of like focused on that for like three months or something while we were quarantined um, because it like was giving me some like kind of like structure and kind of like just coming back to the same painting and like working on it. I really enjoy like adding 
like more figures or like adding little things in there than just like kind of working on like a large painting for multiple, like a long time. I like to do that. Um, um, and so that was cool, I guess, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that space does um, dictate the kind of work I make because I also, um, when I was at school, I was making a lot more ceramics and um, sculpture um, because I had access to labs and like equipment and like wood shops and ceramic labs and whatever. Like I just had access to materials more so and like places to make them and like the tools to make them with. And since I've graduated, I've moved more focusing towards painting, which I also did in school, but I feel like not having um, the materials and space to make all the sculptures I want has made me go more towards 2D, which I also enjoy. And I'll probably also, if I have a chance to like work more with ceramics and sculpture, I will probably do that. And I have made some sculptures, um, especially out of like found materials or materials that I have gotten and I've been using again and again. Um, but I mean, I think it, it does like kind of influence my work, but also I feel like my work can adapt to different kinds of places. And I like seeing like what different structures or places will change my work and influence what I'm making based on like what I have available. But yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's certainly something that we experience at Roy because the space itself is a large box, but we have these movable walls in the box and um, artists are juried and their work is um, invited to Roy and put together by our jurors. So it was really interesting for me to see how each show artists interpret the space a little differently. Walls move around, um, you know, spaces are created that weren't there in the previous show. So it's always great for me to see these new perspectives of the gallery. Um, what did you learn about yourselves or your work and what are some takeaways from working in that negotiating of space and, you know, what because in every show you're going to edit something, right? You bring six pieces and four work and two go away. And then I'm kind of curious about after that or during that process, how does that either influence maybe what you're creating next or how, you know, what do you take away from that experience of negotiating space? Hannah starts. I was just about to offer. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, I learned a lot from the show, um, specifically with the fact that there were movable walls. I've never had a movable wall that I had free reign over. Um, so I think that was like kind of the first thing that we were discussing together as a group is where these things go um, to enable, you know, both groups to have enough space to show the work and, and to really, um, problem solve. Uh, you know, early on, we were really trying to figure out um, the best corner for Sky's tent. And I think that kind of was like the initial, um, I, that's kind of what started, like where we were deciding to put the walls. And then um, that opened up the space to this kind of snake-like maze, which I think um, gave both of us, you know, opportunities to work with corners in new ways. Um, and so I think that was like the biggest learning thing for me was just like, yeah, navigating the possibility of a movable wall and um, figuring out how that can benefit the work in a different way. And then um, I know Bree and I were both excited about working with the columns um, to experiment with sight lines. Um, this, you know, seeing something from the front of the column and then something different on the back of it or the wrapping of the vinyl to kind of carry your eye around it. Um, which was a really cool opportunity because again, I haven't worked with um, a column structure before either. Um, I have like experimented with, you know, sculptures in space creating sight lines, um, but not like an actual architectural component. So that I think that we were both really excited about that. And then I think overall, um, the collaboration, you know, really, I learned a lot with just how um, Brie was responding to the space too. Um, and like, I think that we have different processes um, when we do enter um, a specific installation. And I think that um, I really have to see things, like I have to put things in place for me to actually understand how it works. And um, I Brie kind of like intuitively like felt it. So it was nice to just like, you know, go back and forth, like have someone else there to bounce ideas off of. And then 
Um, also, you know, like as we were working throughout the week, I feel like um, working with Sky as well and bouncing off ideas, you know, with Sky and figuring out, you know, where these things are going to go visually and how they all connect. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll bounce off Hannah there. I think um, you kind of said everything I wanted to say. Um, I have had like maybe a little bit more free reign with movable walls, but it's never really been for myself. Um, I've worked like quite a few years in galleries um, preparing and it's always a lot of fun to work with people and how to reorient the space or change it. And I think like um, what was nice is that Sky came in with like an idea of like, I, I need this tent to go in a corner and me and Hannah were like, we really want the columns. And so I think like it was nice that we both kind of had something that we really desired out of the space initially. And so that caused us to sort of work around it and figure things out. Um, and overall, I'm, I'm happy and excited about, yeah, how snake-like the space turned out in, in kind of being a maze. And, and it allowed for me and Hannah to transition the work in a really nice way where it's kind of fluid. And so like the most kind of desperately different works are, are kind of out of sight of each other, which I think is pretty amazing in a space. Like that I think is really hard to do um, as, uh, me and Hannah have often worked in the Sherman Studio Art Center clean space, which is just a giant like cube with 12 foot ceilings and there's no hiding. And so all the work has to go together perfectly. And so it was nice to kind of hide things from other things in the space um, and block things with the columns. And um, yeah, personally, I, I usually do the photo documentation for my own work. And so I'm really excited to shoot the photos for this show as well, because I think there'll be a lot of different opportunities to skew the perspective of the gallery based on those sight lines Hannah was talking about. Yeah, um, I do. <laughs> um, someone, was, someone came in, so that's why I went and grabbed my mask. Um, but I do really love that when we first met up and you guys were like, we really love the columns. We want the columns. And I was just like, okay, I just need somewhere to put a tent in a corner or something like kind of tucked away. And we kind of like took those two like desires and like try to figure out the options we had for like making those work and then like seeing how else the space evolved from there. And I feel like we, I do really like the way that we set things up. Um, it feels, um, like I don't know like I, I, I kind of have the front but also Bree's sculptures kind of like come in the front and then it kind of snakes around and you guys have this backspace together which I think um it's just like a cool way to divide the space and I do like the way that we use the walls and respond to the space um and also we're kind of like responding responding to each other I mean you guys were obviously working together but um, I had like an idea for like a few weeks to paint a ladder on the wall if I had the time and then somehow bring it onto the floor. But I knew I couldn't paint on the floor. So I wasn't sure how to make that work. And then like, like um, when we were installing, I was like, oh, I could like use a scrap of your vinyl, um, which I did <laughs> there um, on the floor. And so I borrowed, or I mean, I used one part of your vinyl that you had a scrap of and I responded to to that um so um i don't know yeah it was it was cool working in the space and it was a really nice space um and it was nice that we could move these walls and make it how we wanted and also make spaces for things to be kind of hidden away or like right out front and like have the ability to have those nooks and crannies which i really enjoy um yeah, and you guys obviously had your columns that you love, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, that is something certainly that people have noticed, I think, walking into the space. Um, I've mentioned this before in other conversations, but just that, you know, we are so tucked away in our own worlds oftentimes, and particularly with quarantine, that um, most people, when they come into the space, just take a very deep breath. Uh, and just respond to whatever's in the gallery. In this particular instance, I've been hearing lots of comments about um, the synergy and um, the pieces themselves and their bright colors and how wonderful it is to see uh, colors and shapes, particularly bright colors and shapes uh, given the weather outside. So that's very nice. And we, we appreciate that very much. 
Um, if anyone has um, questions that uh, in the Zoom meeting, feel free to um, go ahead and just ask them. Don't even worry about raising your hand, just jump in. Um, in the meantime, I wonder if you all want to talk a little bit about what's coming up next for you. I'll start again. Um, I'm a part of a, I'm a co-collaborator in this uh, new gallery space um, that's actually in our studio space here. It's called the Dream Clinic Project Space. Um, and it's just this tiny room behind me. And each week, um, me and my collaborators are installing one piece on this tiny pedestal that's inside of the space. And so the next thing that I'll be working on is an object for the tiny, it's called the Tiny Pedestal Project. Um, so you can find the um, Dream Clinic project space on Instagram um, to see these like weekly updates of different artists work, both in Columbus and artists working um, around the states. They're sending works to us. So that, that's what's next for me. I guess I'll uh, follow suit in, in proper order. Um, yeah, I am really excited for a few things that I have going on right now. I want I'm in grad school and so I'm super happy and honored to be here for another year and to get to play in Sherman Studio Art Center, which is a dreamland facility for me. It has every all my hopes and dreams come true here every single day. And so I want to savor every minute of that. And then um, I'll be in a show at Brant Roberts Gallery in March um, called Resisting the Hard Edge, which it's all women working in abstraction. And I was really excited when they approached me to include me in that show and, and being kind of in that dialogue about being a woman working in glass and textiles and my interest in, yeah, in abstraction. And so I think it'll be pretty fun to have a full gallery full of women making abstract work. and. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have going on right now. Is that it? I had a few shows postponed from COVID that are going to happen next year. So I was trying to think in my mind all the things, but yeah, I'm just really uh, excited to still be at Sherman. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, um, in March I have, um, Um, work in a show in New York for their, at the, oh my God, I don't know, at the um, Barnett Art Center. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of what it was called. Barnett Art Center in March um, for their like portraiture exhibition or something. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to be doing that and Actually, I'll be going there to install on my birthday, which is March 7th, which is the day the show also comes down. So <laughs> I will try to be in two places at once on my birthday, I guess. Um, and also, um, I got a partial grant to go to an international residency um, but in Central America, actually. But I don't know if it is happening. It's supposed to be in April for the month of April, but um, I, it's probably canceled because I haven't heard from them in a while um, because COVID, like, I don't know what's going on with that or if it's gonna happen. So that's kind of what's going on. I should figure out what I'm doing. Um, but until then I just, I have a studio and I'm hoping to just like, um, hopefully enjoy a little bit of time of like, um, relaxing and like bouncing back and then figure out what I want to do next with my art, I guess. Yeah. I'd really like to make more ladder sculptures, especially the, like the big green one, make more in that sort of style with that process. Um, but I need to get the materials um, or figure out a new way to make it. Um, and also hopefully make some paintings. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what's happening, I guess. Great. Did, did you all have questions for each other or things that you wanted to ask Roy? Oh, man. This is like the part in a job interview where they're like, do you have any questions for us? And I'm always just like, 
<laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, finish this sentence. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I am kind of curious about um, what it is that you're taking away from this experience at Roy. What did maybe you learn about yourself or your own work or, um, you know, showing in a gallery setting? What kinds of things are you taking away from this experience? I can go first. But, um, I think like more what I maybe what I think I will take away more is is this divergence of language between Hannah and I's work and kind of the way that we yeah kind of expandedly played in the space. I think working in kind of an installation um, methodology is really new to me and I've only really kind of done like two or three big installs by myself and so it was really exciting to see Hannah's process and my process collide together um, and sometimes maybe I need um, like half the things of Hannah like Hannah always wants to put more things in and I always want to put less things in and so maybe I need to put more things in um, you know and and learning to to get myself to do the things that I you know, sometimes don't want to do, but I think a lot of the times that's where the good work comes from. Um, especially with these new rug works, like half the time while I'm making them, I'm like, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. And so I think part of it is is taking that away from from the experience as well as uh, kind of the knowledge learned in, in placing work in, in Roy and, and working together as a team to orient the gallery. Um, I think it was, yeah, really exciting in that way to work in a space like that. And definitely, definitely a lot of takeaways, but are maybe more like selfish takeaways than anything else. <laughs> yeah, definitely um, echo what Brie is saying about, you know, I, I feel like, like I was saying before, I learned a lot from Brie in the collaboration. Um, and I think, you know, just the negotiation of space in general and working with, um, I think really intimately with um, you, Lynette and Sky, and everyone else at Roy who are like, you know, putting all these different moving parts together for this, like the show. And I think it was, for me, it was a new experience to see that um, all happening, you know, the things that we contribute, the things that you contribute, the things that Sky is contributing and negotiating, you know, when do they meet and when do they come apart? And um, I think, it, yeah, I learned a lot from just, you know, the negotiation and working with, um, you know, Roy G. Biv, as well as Sky. And overall, I think it was a really good experience and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I learned a lot of things in this install, um, like um, I learned, I feel like I, from Hannah, I learned about sticky tack and I also learned <laughs> from Brie about vinyl existing for more than just stickers or bumper stickers or whatever I've used it for in the past. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. And I also learned some tips about lighting from Brie when we were installing. Um, and um, I don't know, things like that. I, like, I learned some like little things from people, which I appreciate. Um, and um, I mean, I also feel like just having the practice of like taking my work out of the studio and like bring it into a new space and being able to create a like little world um, of my own is like so amazing. And also getting to like collaborate on that world, creating with the two of you and Lynette and like Virgie Biv as a gallery um, is like just an amazing experience. I love being able to like share my work and also like do it in a way that's like sharing work with other artists. Um, kind of like how, cause I really appreciate the way that you two are working together. And also I was just like, I love collaboration. Like I wanna make it as collaborative as possible. And I feel like the way we, our work kind of like blends together really well um, because of the bright colors and um, like similar like imagery and um, kind of like a smatch of like painting and sculpture. Um, and so it's just really fun to have that kind of like response to each other and also um, just like be able to experience each other's work. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
That's great. Well, we all learned something. So that's wonderful. It's, it was a pleasure working with you all. I learned something too. So that's always uh, the most wonderful part about the shows here change every month. And each month, it's a new opportunity to see the space differently and um, rethink how things are laid out and no uh no show really has utilized the columns the way this one has. So now I know something else about the columns. So thank you all. Okay, well, that, those are all the questions that I had. I, I appreciate the opportunity to have the conversation, get to know you all a little bit better and about your work and your practices. Um, if nobody else has any other questions. Um, oh, I'm Eric is putting something in the chat. Eric Nass is on our uh, board here at Roy, and he comes to as many of these chats as he possibly can. So it's good to see you on the call, Eric. Thank you. Um, and he's saying that uh, the show is incredible and he looks forward to a return visit. He got a sneak preview of one of the privileges of being a board member. You get a um, curator's tour. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all very much for the conversation. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And um, that's it for us. If you have any final thoughts, share them now. Otherwise, I think you wanna get back to your studio and creating more work. I actually have a question, I think. Um... Something I've been wondering is how um, you, like Hannah and Bree, um, decided to collaborate for this show, like how you decided to get to that place and like what that process was for you guys. Yeah, I think I had to um, kind of put the seed in Hannah's mind about it. Maybe I'm wrong and Hannah's like, no, I was thinking about it long before. Um, yeah, I... I think like, um, I, yeah, I really admired Hannah's practice and, and seeing her thesis exhibition and, and in my own kind of maybe like selfish pursuit to, to think about installation a little bit more in my practice. Um, I think we were like on a bike ride and I was like, Hannah, do you want to like collaborate on a show? Rudgy Bibbs call is coming up. And she was like, sure. <laughs> and then I just emailed the heck out of her until we wrote the the application on like Google Docs from our separate houses. Um, and yeah, so it was kind of just like a, a crazy idea I had that um, that I think worked out really well. And I was excited that Hannah was like, what, really? You want to collaborate with me? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but maybe Hannah has a different story because I feel like there's always two sides to the story. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I think Brie approached me for the collaboration and I was excited to do it. I like collaborating a lot. I've done it in the past with um, other painters and and um, as well as like installation with another um, artist for the second year show, Lance Pruitt. And there's something that about collaboration that I really love is um, it almost takes the pressure off in some instances um, because you have two minds to work with and making decisions. and. And yeah, like we've been saying, it's just like you always learn something from the process. Um, you're not just, you know, talking to your, yourself anymore. You're talking with someone else or other people. And so, yeah, I was really stoked about the collaboration. Um, and yeah, I also really admire Bree's work. And I think it's also this thing where I see things in Bree's work that I wish I could do and vice versa. And so I think that's why we were both excited to join forces because it's like, we we're both offering something to the other person that we want. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that's, I think that was great. And I think it worked out. It was a challenge, I think. Um, and putting them together, uh, figuring out the connecting force and the epiphany came through the vinyl, I think when we did our first like pre-install. And then after that, it was, um, it was pretty smooth. Yeah, I think Hannah was more worried than I was. I was, yeah. Um, next I was like, it'll be great. It'll be fun. And Hannah was like, ah! <laughs> yeah I think it's because uh yeah I started focusing so much on the paintings um whereas before I was really thinking about like the objects as fragments and movable parts and all of a sudden I was like can the language of the painting move outside of the painting now I don't know <laughs> so it was uh it was really experimental and it was a risk I feel like but it really paid off I think in the end yeah, I think most risks pay off in the end as artists. And it's yeah. just like getting the courage to make the leap. And like you said, I think having another person helps take the pressure off. Like through install, I'd be like, yeah, if I don't like that in two days, it's your fault, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah there's the, that bag of blue shape on the wall it's like I'm like this might be the worst shape in the show but it was my fault so you can blame it on me <laughs> but I feel like it goes both ways you know um yeah. which I think is wonderful and and I think it was just such a breath of fresh air right now for me um, with kind of like COVID and, and being more isolated to get to work in that way. And I think um, being a glassmaker, uh, we work collaboratively constantly. And even if I'm working on my own work, I still have multiple people helping me and, and you know, we'll ask them their opinion on the fly. And with COVID, I've really been missing that opportunity to kind of have tons of people around my studio practice and and so it was really nice to have Hannah in this way and and to have her different skill set as well um I think she has more of a like visual skill set than I do I just like to make stuff <laughs> yeah thanks for the question Sky yeah yeah something I was wondering because I I mean, I love, to I love to collaborate with other artists as well. And I do have a piece in here that's a collaboration video. Um, but I just, I really appreciate that you two came in and were collaborating and like working together and like making magic happen in your little corner um, back area. And I think it was really inspiring to me. And then also I feel like your two, en like your two energies and like Lynette and the like, interns energy of being like we're here to help you it kind of like helps me not feel so stressed and worried about getting an exhibition done in time and like getting everything ready you know I feel like it kind of like brought a fun energy that felt like we can do this like you know we're doing it kind of thing so it was great yes thank you for your amazing playlist Sky <laughs> oh, yeah it kept us going and in the late night yeah, yeah it's great yeah, I think it's interesting to me just to talk about collaboration again is this is kind of the first time I've collaborated with my work and not it been like about the piece itself, you know, mm -hmm. so this is kind of the first time that I've been like, oh, like surrender like the work to someone else to place um, and Hannah doing the same and and I think I made a lot of discoveries about pieces that I like have been living with for a couple months now and that Hannah like completely just like was like, oh, this should wrap around the column. And I was like, mind blown um, and stuff like that. And so it's nice also to have just someone else's hands like playing with the work in a different way. And it be less about like the interior space of the work and kind of the exterior and interior of the gallery. And so yeah. that I think is what excited me so much about this collaboration in particular is that like it wasn't about like creating a series of work it was about like how do we take what we already have and put it together yeah yeah and i think that's that is oftentimes a hard thing to let go of too is um you know letting go of the agency of directing the narrative uh and i think that yeah i think that really does happen through collaboration and creating it does create a new narrative ultimately Great. Well, Roy was excited to be a part of that collaboration and part of that dialogue. And um, good to know that you felt that you were in a safe space that you could make some of those uh, decisions to, as you say, let go and let others. So that's wonderful. Thanks, Lynette. Yeah, thank you, Lynette. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. You've I'm, been our safe uh, this whole time. <laughs> I I didn't stick it out as long as you all did, 2 a.m. I left at a reasonable hour, so. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, thank you all so much for the conversation. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for moderating, Lynette. We appreciate it. My pleasure. All right, well, hope to see you all soon. Continue to take good care. Do something creative today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs>